That's right. Uh, one of the, the, will I say, one of those words that seem to be already taking space in Nigeria's economic conversation is the issue of tax. Well, another one might be debts. Developing countries are facing 2.5 trillion dollars debt shock and Africa is on the front line uh, of that. Developing nations may need to find as much as 2.5 trillion naira over the next five years to meet up with that. In Nigeria, if the plan, uh, plan of the federal government to restructure its ways and means loans of 23 trillion naira uh, comes to effect, then we might be looking at about 67.7 trillion naira by the end of the year. Now, um, are these the words and the conversations we are going to be having in 2023? What are those economic trends we expect this year? We have uh, joining us now in the studio, Mr. Taiwo Yedele. He's a fiscal policy partner and Africa tax leader with PwC. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so last year, at the end of the year, we, we did, uh, you know, some words, some buzzwords you know, for 2022, and of course we had inflation, we had debts, mm -hmm. we had hikes, you know, uh, CBN interest rates, hikes, and all of that. Uh, this year seems to be starting in Nigeria because yesterday we had to discuss the fiscal uh, uh, finance, finance, the finance bill. bill, 2022 finance bill, which comes to, it's supposed to come to effect on the first. Uh, we have some other taxes, you know, so it seems like tax is already dominating conversation <laughs> even early in the year. And of course we are carrying over the issue of debts. Uh, which was not resolved. We also have issues like subsidy, because mm -hmm. we still have the petrol queues out there, and that reminds you that there's still subsidy that is being paid, yes. and yes, the people are paying more than the regulated price. Indeed. So from your perspective, what are the trends we should expect this 2023? Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you're right. I think if you look at 2022, um, you say inflation, you say cost of living, you say debt, um, you know, and, and social crisis in a few places around the world. Uh, in Nigeria, you would add insecurity to that, uh, and sometimes the lack of coordination between the fiscal and monetary authorities in particular, uh, the lack of trust, sub-national, center, citizens, governments. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not sure it's going to be very different in 2023. Of course, taxes will be uh, a major area of focus, like you said, the finance bill has not been assented to as of yet, so it hasn't taken effect. Uh, we don't know whether it will be signed today. Um, and, and some of us have our reservations, and I, I do agree with uh, Dr. Muda Yusuf's uh, position. Uh, on, on the finance bill, government needs to do better. There are issues you cannot control. And the whole world would understand, even when they don't like those outcomes. But then when you do self-inflicted pain, it's difficult for people to understand. For your political narratives, you may score the points. But investors are not, they can see through those, uh, you know, rhetorics. So the trend I expect this year, of course, inflation will still be a major part of it. Uh, high interest rates will be a major part of it. I think that real returns will continue to be negative uh, in most places, including Nigeria in particular. There will be national, regional, and global dimension, particularly geopolitics. Uh, Russia and Ukraine, they don't seem to have found a figure uh, or solution to their problems as of yet. And unfortunately, that's impacting on the rest of the world uh, in a very big way. The one that gives me uh, a big concern personally is COVID. Uh, we don't know whether COVID is, is going to make um, a deadly comeback because we thought we were over with COVID, we got our vaccines, our lives were okay, we're moving on. And what we're seeing in China is giving us a lot of concern. Although they're saying that the variant there now is the variant for which many of us have been vaccinated, but you never can tell whether another variant will show up. We're beginning to see limited restrictions in some countries especially if you are traveling out of China, even through a third country. So, yeah, those are some of the trends I expect uh, 
will be the major attention uh, and focus this year. You know, that COVID is a very scary one because we do know how COVID devastated the economy in 2020, spilling even over to 2021. Yes, yes. And as it is now, I don't think I've heard of Nigeria. I know the US, the UK, they have started mm. talking about restricting. And China is a major, major trade partner with Nigeria. That means there's a lot of uh, uh, inflow yes, and yes. outflow, you know, to China from Nigeria and all of that. Exactly. And I don't think that's being checked mm -hmm. now. I hope it doesn't happen when we already start having all those deadly cases, as you have noted. Yes. Now, another big issue in Nigeria last year was FX. Mm -hmm. We saw the Naira depreciate and still depreciating. Yes. We saw our reserves. You know, mm. what do you see in these areas? Yeah, you know, uh, another interesting thing about 2023 is, is the year of two halves, right? You have the first half, uh, May plus handover, technically being a different administration than the second half. And I do not think that anything will be different between now and May. We're going to have these multiple windows, lack of transparency as to who gets what, at what rate. And unfortunately, uh, goods and services are already pricing at the black market rate, even if you are getting the official rate. So we're already suffering. Uh, and at the same time, we're discouraging investors because they don't want to bring in their hard-earned money at 450, 440, mm -hmm. and then, you know. So the hope, um, um, because we need to always allow hope to be alive, right? <laughs> so I'm hoping that the second half, and based on the manifestos of the leading political parties, uh, even though you can't really trust what politicians say, <laughs> but let's say we take that as, you know, half truth. Uh, it suggests that they would address the issue of foreign exchange. And what I think Nigeria needs to do is not rocket science, right? What you need to do is to take out legitimate demand from the parallel market, move it to the official market, and then do the supply-demand uh, intervention in that place so that even though you may have a depreciation in the exchange rate in the official market, but it will not get to the point of the parallel market. And that way we can attract more foreign direct investment, uh, foreign portfolio investors will come in, and so on and so forth. Mm. Uh, and I think even more importantly, we need to remind ourselves that also in 2022, even if we, if we did nothing wrong, Naira would have depreciated because the USD was stronger by almost 20% against the basket of international currencies. Uh, so I think on the official market, even though it's not reflective of the real exchange rate, it did well. Depreciation there, I believe, was under 20%. But at the parallel market, which is more reflective, that was where we saw the drama. More reflective and more realistic. Yes, more realistic, <laughs> more realistic. Even the guys importing diesel will tell you, we can't get the official exactly, rates. Yeah? Yes. So they're going to buy parallel market, mm -hmm. manufacturers, everybody actually. Because that's where, that's you, where actually, you find so, the... So talking yeah. about the, uh, you know, the campaigns and the promises, I did hear one, uh, one of the party mm. uh, um, presidential candidates say that he was going to um, tell the central bank to merge the exchange rates. So I thought to myself, how possible is it that the executive can just give an order that rates be merged? Mm. Is it workable? Because if we talk about yes. them bringing in solution, mm. then we have to, it's not just about them saying we're going to solve the problem. Yes. It's how, how are you going yes. to solve the problem? Yes. Can you deal with the spillover effects, mm -hmm. you know, when you give such orders? You know, yes. that, that is what comes to my mind. Yeah, I, I don't think it's right for anyone um, as a president to direct the central bank as to what they need to do, right? But we know it can be done indirectly. And we should start with what I call the low-hanging fruits. So on one hand, uh, you find, for example, we have policies in Nigeria today that are complicating our FX situation. For example, there are loads of taxes that government says Nigerians, businesses, individuals must pay in foreign currency, and I don't get it. So if I order something, maybe a software from any of these digital giants, I'll go and join the queue to bid for $1,000 to pay. When I find that, I'll come back and say there's withholding tax, there's VAT, and then I'll go and join the queue again to bid for dollar that's already in Nigeria so I can use it to pay government of Nigeria. We are creating artificial scarcity 
uh, you know, and then demand for USD, and that's creating problems. So what the CEO of Nigeria, next CEO of Nigeria can do is to look at those policies and ensure that they promote the demand for Naira rather than the demand for USD. When the whole world, almost the whole world, descended on Russia, they did a few things. One of it was buy my crude in my local currency. Yeah. In fact, they even said pay our taxes in our local currency. They still pay. I know that. Yeah. Uh, and some months ago, I know that the ruble gained because it was the tax paying period. And they and were paying in local currency. Pay so you bring again. your dollar and demand the local currency. You have yes. to create demand for the Naira. For your... So what we can also do is discourage the CBM from these 43 leads of prohibited items by ensuring that there's proper coordination between monetary and fiscal policy. What do I mean by that? If, I do, if, if importing toothpick is not illegal in Nigeria, I will allow you to import toothpick. I will allow you to bid for FX in the official market. But because I want to discourage the importation of toothpick, I will impose higher import duties. It can be 300%. So you get the same result you are getting now without the distortion in the foreign exchange market. Those are the things I believe that the next president can do without necessarily uh, taking away the uh, autonomy of the CBM, because that's important, mm. uh, not only for the investment environment, but generally for good governance. But why does it seem so difficult to have one rate? I think people are benefiting from it. The people who are benefiting from uh, mystery and the chaos we have. By the way, you know, the, the major currencies of the world, maybe apart from the USD, also suffered. You didn't see them creating three rates or four rates or five rates. So we tend to not take a step back and say, what is the fundamental reason for our problem and address it? Sometimes we're knee jerk, right? So if this is not working, let's do RT200. Anybody that is exporting, do another one. You say, well, if you're bringing dollar from the diaspora, let's add five naira to it. These things never solve any problems. So we need to take a step back and say, how can we fundamentally have one harmonized rate without creating problems that, in my view, I don't think that if you now harmonize the rate, it will now go beyond the parallel market. It's, it's unlikely, right? It can't go beyond the parallel market. It can only get better. And so we're set to between the... I and E window and the parallel market. And that way, uh, you can. I, I, I have multinational clients who have hundreds of millions of dollars to bring in. They're not bold enough to bring in the money. Because of because that. Because uncertainty. Yeah, there's so much uncertainty <laughs> yeah. and distortion you know, in the market. Just before we let you go, yes. I, 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 it looks like the, the budget might get signed today. It got increased by 1.3 trillion naira yes. by the lawmakers. Yes. We're still talking of deficits and financing and debt burden and all of that. Mm. And then there's also the issue of implementation. You know, when we discussed the finance bill yesterday, yes. we see all those taxes, the tertiary, the police, uh, the NYSC, and we thought that if these taxes are actually making impact mm. as they're supposed to, mm -hmm. I don't think Nigerians will complain so much mm -hmm. because we'll be feeling the impact. Yes. So now, if we have a budget of over 21, almost 22 trillion naira, and then we have this deficit and the debt burden mm. contributing to that amount we gave for Africa's debt burden, mm -hmm. you know, how, how do we make our budgets trickle down more you know so it's not just a number to the average nigerian yeah. it's actually something that an average nigerian can sit down and watch and say oh the budget for this year is 21.83 trillion naira i believe that this part and this part is going to have an impact on my everyday life mm. and my living or my income yeah so i think fundamentally there is a problem with our philosophy uh, because I think next to the constitution, the next most important document for a country is the budget. So we think that government can solve our problem and they must fix road and do everything. So you see a lot of attention on government wanting to do almost everything, rather than creating the enabling environment for the private sector to do it and you just regulate. That has to change. If you look at the increase in recurrent expenditure over the past few years, it's unbelievable. We are not living and spending our money as a country, like a country that is in need, right? That is struggling to raise revenue. The lawmaker not only added 1.3 trillion to our deficit, they also passed a supplementary budget for last year, few days to the end of the last year, almost 1 trillion. At the subnational level, the state have a budget deficit of around 5 trillion. Now, if you put all of that together, it means that debt would increase next this year. I was going to say next year. Interest rates are going up. The debt service cost to revenue ratio would also go up. 
and it's concerning for me personally. I think that in the finance bill, <clears throat> government could have been a little bit more intentional to focus on the areas that are most important to Nigerians to make us move the needle and allow businesses to thrive. You should not be planning to increase the CIT rate for gas flaring company in quotes to 50% when the whole world is saying, can you help us provide gas? And they are willing to bring their money. Now, you just created a problem for the investors not to come here. Maybe they should go to Mozambique. You are increasing tertiary education tax rate from 2.5 to 3%. It was only just increased 2021. And over the past 10 years, 2 trillion era, over 2 trillion has been raised. Nobody is saying, how has this 2 trillion been spent? Those are the things we need. We need to tell Nigerians and Nigerian leaders and the next CEO of Nigeria, not only what they must do, but what they must not do. Because most times we tend to solve one problem, we create two other ones. And that's not helping us to move forward. Wow. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Taiwo Yidili. It's a pleasure. We certainly do have a whole lot to chew <laughs> as we begin the year on yeah. very serious notes. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Fiscal Policy Partner and Africa Tax Leader with PwC for sharing your time and views with us this morning. Thank you for having me. All right. We'll take a break. And uh, yes, uh, the President may be signing the 2023 uh, appropriation bill today and uh, we just talked about how it can affect you. We do hope it to be more impactful than last year. Well, we'll take a break now. When we come back, we have more conversations here in Business Morning on Channels Television.